be can we use food in other ways when it comes to well listen I think that food is just a part of bonding and mating and dating and it's been yes. like this forever it's a staple of who we are of how we function of you know how we live our life and and how we work right it's just who we are yes um however we can also incorporate into you know, food into our foreplay. Yes. Right. What a fantastic way to kind of, you know, get things going and get things, get things happening. I mean, I always say, so sex is very sensual and eating is very sensual. Yes. You know, if you kind of want sensual inspiration when it comes to food, right? Think of nine and a half weeks with Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger, right? <laughs> yeah. That movie. I mean, remember that scene where they're just feeding each other? I mean, that's hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you can actually do that with your partner in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you are. You mm. can do those types of things. I mean, think about it. I mean, you can really, um, you know, play with different textures, play with different temperatures, right? Everyone who wants to play with food, the first thing that they should think of is, you know, play with temperatures. Maybe mm. suckle, a suckle on a lollipop yeah. or suckle on a on a popsicle, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, see if you can even go down on your partner. Yeah, or even you, just kissing, yeah. Or even or just on kissing, nipple, right? skin, yeah, anywhere. Absolutely That's anywhere, a very unique right? sensation. Just drizzling, you know, something very cold you know on all over your partner's body fantastic stuff right? yeah it's going to give you that fantastic kind of sensation that you know is going to be tickling and tantalizing mm -hmm. and intriguing yeah. and it's just gonna you know be very very exciting yeah I had some like warmed up massage oil on me recently and I was like mm -hmm. oh this is where it's heaven. at <laughs> it's heaven and then think about it what if prior to that you you know would have gotten some kind of cold for foreplay right before yeah, right yeah so and, or doing right both after temperatures. exactly and i mean and the truth is some of our you know body parts actually only respond to temperature mm -hmm. so even some of our you know erogenous zones some of our nerve endings only respond to temperature to kind of you know play with the temperature mm -hmm. and they actually don't respond to anything else so if you are not actually incorporating that temperature play into your, um, you know, foreplay or into your sex. You're right? missing out big you time. You actually are missing out big time. You don't even know what it feels like, which is kind of crazy. Right? That's interesting because I feel like uh, tons of people have not experimented with temperature play, like yeah. at all. Yeah. And I know, like, I work at a sex shop, so right away my head goes to, like, the warming and cooling lubricants and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And also, um, when we were talking about kind of getting the blood flowing to the proper places, like, there are a bunch of, like, um, you know, nipple titillators or clitoral stimulants where they're doing exactly that. Yes. And it's interesting, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the ingredients in these uh, products are like, like peppermint is in a cooling, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or like uh, cinnamon is in a warming. So they are kind of based yes. in, in foods. And, and, and along those same lines, I mean, like when you look at like scented and flavored lubricants and scented and flavored massage oils and stuff like that, is that kind of tapping into our same kind of... Um, Ar you know, uh, ar uh, what am I trying to think of? Aromatic. Uh, oh, I'm so bad with words today. <laughs> I've been out for a long time. Um, mm. When you smell something and it makes you feel a certain way, yes. like makes you feel relaxed mm. or uh, something like that. Jeez, I cannot think of the word. Well, is that all kind of similar to as if you were ingesting this that food? It is similar, but I mean, our sense of smell and our sense of taste, they are both two different senses, right? Right. But an interesting thing about uh, your sense of smell is that it actually is connected to our limbic um, lobe in our brain, which is responsible for certain feelings and certain emotions and certain, um, you know, just, um, um, you know, certain kind of, uh, yeah, emotions that are, that are attached to our experiences. And right, like nostalgic. Happens, exactly, yeah. Or memory, yeah, like body memory, sense memory. Exactly. Right. It can actually really tap into something that was suppressed for many, many years. And all of a sudden, a certain smell or a certain kind of fragrance can just bring you back. You yes. know, we a lot of us, for example, will change the perfume after a breakup. 
Interesting. Right? Because yes, because that smell has a very distinct memory of that person for you. Yeah, I can't stand like, yeah, let me list the, the perfumes I can't say. CKB. Okay. <laughs> That was in the 90s. <laughs> I can't get near, I think, CKB and CK1. I just can't. Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, my God, I'm smelling that boyfriend. That's right. So, <laughs> that's not what I want. <laughs> so those are the fragrances that kind of stimulate, you know, your you know, response to certain memories, certain feelings, certain emotions. And, you know, you just got to gotta, gotta avoid them. Yeah. And it's true. It's the same thing with food. Because, I mean, one of the first things that we actually perceive when we are enjoying the meal is the fragrance, right? Yes. And we actually should engage our sense of smell, you know, as much as possible. Because another thing that people don't realize is that, you know, another way that kind of food and sex are interconnected mm-hmm. is because one of the first things that we have to do is to smell food. And the reason for that is because when we inhale the fragrance of the food, mm-hmm. it actually sends the response into, you know, in our body that says, okay, now there's food coming and it actually helps us produce the digestive enzymes, Ah. which is the same thing like with sex, right? When we are, you know, having that foreplay and a very sensual kind of play and, and, and words and talking and touching and kind of giving us time to prepare for sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, what happens is of course there's lubrication for women, there's erection for men, and we're actually having a much more enjoyable intercourse Mm -hmm. as a result of that. Yeah. And I think everyone can really relate with um, just loving the scent of your partner, like just putting your face right in their neck Mm -hmm. and just like, it's like crack to me, like (laughs) how my nesting partner smells like I could smell him all day, like no matter what. I'm like, he is never smelling bad to me. Like, and that's, I think that's just a very powerful thing. Like that, Mm -hmm. that creates um, such like warm feelings for me when I smell my partner, you know what I mean? So I can imagine that's all part of like that kind of body preparing for Mm -hmm. sex, right? Like it just does something to every part of me to smell my partner. Yes. You know? Yes. It's it's Um, a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Did you have anything else to say about food before we move on? Well, you know, just kind of in general, when it comes to foreplay, I find mm-hmm. that a lot of people kind of have this idea that they have to use things that are kind of traditionally known as foreplay ingredients, like chocolate, whipped cream, whipped chocolate cream. Yes, thank and you. things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. You know, you really can kind of uh, experiment. Why not spaghetti? <laughs> What would I do with spaghetti? Tell me. Set the scene. Well, let me ask you something. (laughs) Why not spaghetti? I mean, it's stringy and it's messy. And it's okay for things to get messy when it comes to your foreplay, if you're asking. Yes, yeah. The wet and messy fetish. That's a huge thing. Lots of people love getting all wet and all, all messy. Yeah. But sex is, it's okay to have... A messy sex. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's kind of artistic and it's kind of hot and it's kind of messy and it's steamy. And I mean, oh, yeah. it's really very, very, um, you know, kind of out of the box. And I mean, you have to create rituals that work for you because every couple is different. Yes. Right. Every couple has their own ways to kind of bond and mate and have fun. So so you really can't. It doesn't have to be all kind of the traditional sugar coated things right it can yeah. be you know even brie it can cheese. be chili a bowl of chili yes it can be brie cheese i mean brie, brie cheese is a fantastic palate cleanser so yeah. if you were you know doing a little you know had a little marathon of oral pleasure or yeah. whatever you know cleanse your palate have with a bit of brie baked cheese. brie yeah <laughs> get, that's the, what I- get the brie in the <laughs> oven beforehand <laughs> go down on me for 20 minutes and yes, then ma'am. go get that big brie <laughs> Come back for another 20 minutes and just keep putting more food in the oven. Yes. I love it. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, like, what about, uh, what is your opinion and what, what do you generally tell people that want to actually incorporate the food into their sex? So, say, using, like, a fruit or something, for example, as a masturbation device or, you know, actually, uh, well, I guess we kind of said with the whipped cream, you know, mm-hmm. actually spraying it on yeah. the body and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, what, uh, do you have any recommendations of how to do that maybe safely and uh, pleasurably for people? Right. I think that's a fantastic question because a lot of people don't realize is that 
especially when it comes to women, our erogenous zones are extremely, extremely sensitive when it comes to, you know, sweet things and things like that. So really, you shouldn't put too many sugary things, you know, near our erogenous zones, especially female genitalia. Yeah, yeast, yeast infection city. Exactly. It's the East Infection City. It's so well said. And, you know, the only thing that is really kind of universally safe is coconut oil. Coconut oil. Go for Put it. it everywhere. No problem. Yeah, Put it I, over I, your uh, body. yeah, I had a gynecologist uh, specifically recommend that as a lubricant for me mm-hmm. because I was having issues with uh, irri- like being irritated. Right. Um, I had, yeah, I had like, uh, it burned when I peed for like six months straight mm-hmm. and they had tested everything under the sun and it ended up just, they weren't a hundred percent sure, but they were like, it most likely just got a little bit irritated mm-hmm. in your urethra. And it was just, right. it took that long to heal. And he was like, you know what? Use his recommendation was use coconut oil every Fantastic. time. Use coconut oil. And yeah, I was like, it's natural. Great. It's safe. It smells like vacation. It smells <laughs> lovely. Oh yeah. Like in the meantime, I've been like, that was maybe a year ago now, but like now I'm uh, doing a lot of like massage, which is, that's not something I, had done but like say the past six months I've been incorporating a lot of oils uh like through massage so like oh yeah coconut oil it, right away it's like close your eyes and you're like on the beach yes. <laughs> especially if it's heated mm-hmm. oh if it, put it in the microwave don't heat it up too hot that's that's dangerous like make sure you uh temperature test it before yes. drizzling it on somebody but um oh man that'll just transport you yes that and, scent. and you know well one more tiny thing that you have to consider is also make sure that when you're playing with food with whatever make sure that your partner is not allergic to it yes very good point right because a lot of us let's say you know why not peanut butter why not uh well i have a friend that's allergic to strawberries she's allergic to nothing else but strawberries and she can't have a strawberry flavored anything Mm -hmm. touching her so like always good to check in yes and also no spicy food so chili pepper (laughs) is okay to eat kind of when we're you know outside of you know outside of the bedroom but don't bring it in the bedroom because it really can just turn into a disaster i'm sure i'm sure like not everyone but i know a lot of chefs have um the story of they've been cutting chili peppers or jalapeno peppers or whatever you know and then they go to use the washroom yes (laughs) and then their penis is on fire okay uh (laughs) Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> to um, uh, we kind of are hitting on it a little bit, uh, but one of your um things that you talk about a lot as a sensuality expert is getting in touch with our own sensuality, like on a daily, minute, minutely, hourly basis, mm-hmm. right? Um, let yeah, let's just start with there. Why why is that important? Maybe. Well, I think we're just depriving ourselves from living a life fully and very presently uh you know if we are disconnected from our sensuality our life is just deprived from little sensual adventures and little sensual delights um that we all should have and they're so accessible to each of us yeah i feel like it's so easy to go around disconnected from anything your senses are doing so easy to be on the bus on your phone and just not being connected And the truth is most of us are disconnected because of our phones, because of the noise that are, you know, is created by social media, by, I mean, our lives in general. I mean, we... Busy lives. Busy lives and it's life and it's, you know, part of living in North America. And I think it's just, you know, becoming a very global issue as well. All of us are becoming extremely, extremely disconnected from, you know, just what gives us pleasure. Mm. I mean, we are disconnected even from our partners, some of us, right? Mm. Some of us don't like smelling our partners like you do. I mean, (laughs) you know... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right some of us just it's really just uh it, even sex becomes a job mm. right because we are just we don't have time to connect with anything and i think bringing back that awareness to how sensual our existence can be can actually just be really really rewarding it can be so so tantalizing and it just mm-hmm. really can just bring us back to a very kind of basic minimalistic lifestyle where we don't need to you know to consume as many things we don't need to keep up with the joneses and so on and so on so mm-hmm. it's really very basic principle that we can learn a lot from mm-hmm. so what can we what can we do today to get more in touch with our sensual self 
Wow, that's a, that's a big question. And <laughs> the truth is, the answer is actually very simple. Mm -hmm. You have to find what works for you because mm -hmm. for everybody it's different. But I think that the, one of the most important things is get in touch, be curious about what gives you that sensual satisfaction, you know, and it can be so simple as, you know, taking maybe a lengthy shower and giving oh. yourself an extra moment. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> right? I love taking showers. <laughs> Me too. You have no idea I... how many times, uh, you know, my husband tells me, he says, do you really need, need to take such long showers? Because I mean, really, how long like, are your showers? Oh my goodness, sometimes I can stay there for 30 minutes. How how many times? How often? <laughs> Twice a day sometimes. I sometimes do three times a day. I sometimes have a half hour shower <laughs> three times a day. I I'll love, drink to that. I love showers. <laughs> I'll drink to Cheers. that. Cheers.